Alrighty, Brett C. here from Striper Vault. You're up to 20 places. Did I say it right? Palacios. Palacios. Galactos. Galactos. From Guardian. Guitarist here of Guardian. New album, Swing Swing Swan. Uh, I asked basically Jamie about each song. He just right. gave me a rundown. But the ones I want to ask you about are uh, Rich Man Overline mm -hmm. and uh, See You in Heaven. Okay. Why don't you start with Rich Man? Rich Man, just to tell you about the tune. Or <clears throat> okay, well, Rich Man was uh, just one of those things where um, I was just, again, it was just kind of a weird experience. I was writing just writing songs. I had about four four songs that I was working on. And, and then I just, I literally just, as I was working on it, the other songs, just literally picked up the acoustic and went, Rich man over the line. Rich man over the line. I said, oh, that'd be a good chorus. And I put it on a little side tape. You know, like I, I have my four track when I'm, you know, just demoing stuff. Then I have a little handheld that I can just tape stuff right away if I get an instant idea so I don't have to mess with the other things. So I said, oh, that'll be a great chorus. So I just st stuck it down. And I worked on another song and, and was working on that. And I came back to that. And when I came back to it, I just said, well, I'll just I'll put it down on tape, see what it sounds like. And I basically played all the, all the music to it, just made it up there, on, made it up on the spot. And then uh, then I said, OK, well, I'll just, I'll just put down some vocals and sing the chorus. And most of the vocals that you hear that I put down were just what came out of my mouth when it, when it came out. So it was kind of weird because after I sang it and went back and started listening to it, then I realized what the message was saying, you know, which was kind of weird because usually you think about stuff first before you write it down. But this all just came out. And it's basically about a, uh, just about kind of a conceptual song. It's, it's really the first kind of finger pointing song that we've ever written. We, we don't really write songs, you need to, you need to, you need to. We, we usually stay away from that. But this song is basically a sarcastic song. And it's basically based off of somebody that the idea of, it's, it's kind of way out there, but the kind of the idea of the, the rich man, the rich young ruler who came up to Jesus and asked him about, you know, I've done all this, I've done this, this, and this. What do I need, what do I need to do? And Jesus said, give everything give all your money to the poor and come follow me. And so the song is really not about money. It's about whatever it is that keeps you from God. You know, and that could be money or power or fame or whatever it is, you know. But it's whatever really keeps you from God. And uh, so it's kind of the spirit of the rich man, you know, whatever keeps you from God. You know, I, it, but again, it's kind of conceptual, you know. It's, if, you, if you don't really know what I'm talking about. It's, the song doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't know. Maybe it does to you. I don't know what you thought about. First it. time I heard it, mm -hmm. I was kind of confused. Yeah. I, check the lyrics. I mean, it was intentionally written that way. You know, you need to, you know, you need to find yourself. You need to free the guilt. You need to dust my shelf. You know, but those all, those those things all mean something. But. Let's talk about your lead singer, Jamie Rowe. I know now originally he didn't want him in the band, but he right. said, oh, come on, man, you gotta he let me in the band. He cried. He so sweat blood to be in the this, band. That's nice. Yeah, well, my mis my mistake for not wanting him to be in the band. It's your damnation for not wanting that's him to be in the band. That's right. Luckily, <laughs> luckily God, God stopped me, so. Oh. All right, uh, see you in heaven. First time I heard that. First time I heard that, I thought Jamie Rowe was telling that. You did what now? I thought, See You in Heaven, first time I heard it, I'm like, I bet you Jamie wrote that. Because yeah. you know, for a while, when uh, Jamie was just kind of a fan of Guardian, right. he was having a hard time with the right. that you were helping him off. Right. And I was surprised to see that you wrote that. Right. Why don't you tell us something about that? Well, my, my mom died when I was 11, and uh, Jamie's dad died when he was 17, and, and Dave's mom died when he was 19. And so, I was just, you know, I, and I share this a lot at our shows now, but I was just out in my garage writing songs, had four that I was working on, went, went through each one of those to try and get some kind of, you know, inspiration off of each one. Nothing really happened. 
So I said, well, and it, it really was just kind of strange because I said, well, maybe I'll try something new. I actually said that in my head. I'll, well, maybe I'll try something new. I played two chords and said, sang the words, it's hard to say goodbye, my friend. And boom, just this flood of emotion came. I started thinking about when my mom died when I was 11. I started thinking about all that and, and the years of not being with my mom. One of the lines goes, uh, I want to run back to you and show you the life that I lived without you. There's times I just want to go back and like to that little kid when I was, you know, when my mom died and just be with her and show you, show her all the stuff that has happened in my life. And, and uh, so I was really mourning for my mom that night. Just really some, some deep emotions came out. I basically, basically wrote the whole song in, a, in about two hours, finished it that night and just demoed it. And I remember playing it for, for Jamie and Dave. I think Carl was out of town and I played it for Jamie and Dave. And, so I got this new song, you know, it's kind of heavy, and I played it for them, and they were like, Whoa. you know, they just both of them started crying. So it, it it's cool because it's it's a it's a song I think that all of us, you know, us three since we've lost a parent can relate to, and I think everybody can really relate to it, or most people because they've had some kind of loss. You know. That's the thing I like about it was, you know, a loss. It could it could be. It could right. be a loss, like a friend moving to right. a different state. No, exactly. Still... Exactly. I mean, it's definitely more. It can be that way, a little lighter. It's definitely about somebody who died, and you know. And as I was writing it, I, I kind of had some lines in there that weren't, were more specific to me. I decided right then to change them and make it more broad, so I yeah. didn't want to exclude anybody from it. And you ended on a high note. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it, even though it is a sad song, it is happy because even though there's grief, you know, or even though we mourn, that's what the Bible says, we do mourn when somebody dies, but even though we mourn, we don't, you know, we don't grieve with, like, those without hope, you know, there's still hope. And I will see my mom in heaven again, so that, that's that's the promise that I hold on to. Mom, what are so, these? What are well, hopefully, uh, in those days, or in the heavenly realm, there won't be sideburns. Maybe everybody will. Everybody will look like Elvis. I hope. <laughs> I, hope. Yeah. I need to put weight on. Well, Elvis used to be skinny. Steve Taylor tour. How's it going? It's going cool. First couple of shows were kind of shaky, trying to get new production out and stuff and get things worked out. But um, I was excited just to be on this tour to begin with, just because of Steve. I, I know he's got a lot of integrity. And I think he's really talented. He's really creative. So it was just something different for us, and I was excited about it. So it's going good. We're in the we're in the groove now. We have enough shows under our belt where the machine is running and it's, it's working good. You know? Forty minute groove. You have yeah. a tough time picking. No, we we had about we have about forty five minutes. Yeah, it's hard to pick. You know, I think swing is too or too new because we were opening up with. Uh, what were we open? Endless. We were opening with Endless Summer, and everybody's like, you know, Guardian, yeah, huh? what song is that? You know, they, they just, and they were listening, they didn't know what was going on, so we we changed the set a couple times and, and tried to work it out, and so we're still opening up with Dr. Jones from the last record. So, you know, it was, yeah, it's hard to pick what everybody's happy with and stuff, or to get all the fans, but, you know, when you're opening an opening slot, you just get what you get best you can so we mix it up. Favorite song on any of on any of our records? I don't know. I for some reason on on a swing I really like Rich Man as far as his song goes. And I don't know why. Great vocals. Yeah I sang it. It's certainly not because I sang it, trust me, that's not why. But I just think it's just kind of a trippy song that came out of me because it's real Beatly sound and I was never into the Beatles mm -hmm. so on this record I, I really like that on that tune uh, I'm not answering your question because I, I can't think of one that I really like I really like Sweet Mystery off of the last off of the last record for one of the mellower tunes and, uh, really, really like Dr. Jones is one of the rock tunes so there's a lot of stuff you know and then there's things that I like on the record more on the record, and then there's other songs that I like playing live more, you know, so just because they're different or they, you know, it's fun or whatever. So, the power of love, I can never get sick of playing that live for some reason, I don't know why. But 
other song that I get tired of, but that song, every tour, it doesn't matter. I love playing that song. You guys are changing a little bit, too. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, and that's, I mean, as you as you go on and stuff, and you come through places and you play them more than, you know, two or three times, you know, you have to start doing things to your music and making it more interesting and just experiment. Now, the uh, the whole vibe on this is totally different from what you yeah. before. You know, is that kind of just natural fan progression? Yeah, I, I think it was purpose. I think so. I mean, we didn't sit down and say, well, let's completely change the course of our musical career or whatever, like that. I think some of it was is that we got off of tour, and I toured with Michael W. last year, so I had all these dates under my belt for the for the beginning of the year, and then I had a week off, and then got right into Guardian, and we went to Europe a couple times, and so we were so busy last year, and did so many dates that when I got off the road in, in December, it was just like, Ugh. and you know, I was just so tired, and, we, and we, we were going to make an acoustic EP, so I went in, in to write, and whenever I write, I don't just say, okay, I need to write two songs. Dave's going to write two, and Jamie's going to write two, or whatever. I just write, and I'll try and write as many songs as I can in the time that I have, as long as, it's, as, long as they're coming out. So as I was writing, we were supposed to do EP, then everything kept getting pushed back, and the Elefante Studios weren't built yet, so everything kept getting put, pushed back and back. And by that time, we had like 20, no, I think it was about 15 songs written. And... Uh, a little more than that. Anyways, <clears throat> so um, it turned, since it was going later and later, it turned in from, it to, from an EP to just doing a regular full record, full CD. And then I went in and laid an acoustic bass down on all, all the songs. And then we just kind of sat back and just said, okay, what are we going to do? And, well, let's put drums on this, let's put bass on that, guitar. And it just kind of kept building up. Some songs, we said, like Rich Man, we said, oh, we really want to hear that one produced because it had that kind of Beatle-y vibe. And other ones like, um, I don't even know my own song, Still In My Mind, we just kept really stripped down. So, you know, different songs took off different things. We just let it happen in the studio. We were not like, whatever. And, you know, some people think because we, now that we're on Murr, that Murr made us change and stuff, they had not even heard the record until it was finished. Nobody heard a note off of it, so. It's just what we did, and to me, when I listen to this record, even though there are some songs that are totally different, if you listen to each one of the last two rec two Guardian records, there are th any one of these songs could be on that record, most likely. You know, any one of these songs will basically fit on there because we always throw a couple songs, yeah, Captain or Sweet Mystery or those type of songs on. And, and the one plan that we have had is to just branch out to. We don't want to be stuck in any okay, you're a metal band, and I have nothing against metal, but I've always been way more into rock, that, that kind of thing, and just branching out, being able to play all kinds of things, you know. One thing you wish your fans or the readers, people watching this or reading this, um, uh, I don't know if it's a Yeah, one thing that you want to for, for me personally is that just the only, the only that just that I'm a real person and that I, I just I struggle like everybody else. I know that's kind of a cliche, but it's really strange when when I meet other guys in bands like Hocus Pick. You know, I saw their picture and I had never met any of them before. You know, they're on Steve's tour, and I met them. And I thought just by looking at their pictures that they were certain kind of guys. You know, and then when I meet them, they're just a bunch of goofballs like like everybody else. And it's really weird in the, in the music industry. We, we usually have this view of like these artists or these people being a certain way and usually it's just everybody's just a bunch of goofus you know just a bunch of goofs just trying to make music and, and serve God and, and uh, I mean that's that's the way I, that I am there's certain things that I'm really serious about like my family and my wife and uh, my relationship with God I really I really take songwriting serious but actually playing guitar and on stage and that kind of stuff is really funny to me. That's just, it's goofy. Yeah, it's fun, you know, it's fun. And rock and roll is kind of silly if you think about it as far as trying to be all serious, like, oh, I'm a serious rock guy. You know, it's just, it's more goofing around for us and, and having fun. So just that people know that that God made, I, I basically feel we're pretty much all the same as people. God has made us and some have different talents in other areas different areas uh, that we're just
just people. I'm a person. You know, I'm no different. I just can play guitar. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you done it? No, I, it, it always boggles my mind that uh, that there are people that would really support you. That not just in what they buy or what telling their friends, but in prayer. We have so many people that say they pray for us all the time. And I know they do because you know, I can, just by what Guardian's been doing, I can tell that people are praying for us. So we appreciate that. It makes a difference to have that kind of support. That's a wrap, pretty much. Oh. This is Brett, Tony. See you. You're welcome. Who are you? You're all, like, all serious, like a real interview. So let's just get the floor. Yeah, I talked to Janice two nights ago, and she's done. We just were talking about, you know, she was throwing me in on what's going on, stretching yeah. and all that stuff. And then I asked her if she heard the new the Guardian one. Sooner or later, you know, we're in the company. Right. Since you've got the big scene going on. Have you seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. But, uh, and then I said you guys were coming to Green Bay. Finally. Finally, even though you And we're even close, huh? Three blocks from my house. That's crazy. We're not close. I mean, we're not cold. Today it was warm, man. Yeah, right now it's cold. I took a, is it cold? I, I took a walk all the way down to where that coffee shop is down there and turned the other way. We saw you. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> Carl and Jamie just stopped over at my place and took all my stuff. Really? Can we sell you all? Yeah, you're done. This behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> this is this is the behind the scenes video. Let's go. Cool. I appreciate you taking it. Right. Cheap sales. Six bucks at Target. Let's say yeah, I shot we need to the we store. need to clarify something too. That you don't <laughs> the, this is like the Hall's mentholiptus. <laughs> My favorite. Am I done now?